Okay, welcome back everyone to the second lecture today on uh, PC314 Media and Technology in Ministry. Let me go ahead and share the PDF. All right, so we closed off um, the last hour, the last previous session lecture by just saying that uh, we need to be open to new methods, the contemporary methods in media and technology in ministry. We shouldn't, you know, by, by default, we shouldn't look at it as evil, but look at it as a tool that we could use um, to minister God's word to people. But, uh, and so while doing that, uh, what is our motivation? How do we go about it? And what are some guidelines um, that uh, we should keep in mind is what we want to do in this lecture, and then we will pause. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 19 to 22. First Corinthians 9, 19 to 22. Um, somebody can read that for us, please. First Corinthians 9. 19 to 22, please. I'll read. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to 22. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. And to the weak I became as I, I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Hmm. Thank you. So the Apostle Paul is sharing with us some um, of his um, motivation and his approach in reaching all people. You know, verse 19, he says, Though I am free from all men, I make myself a servant to all that I might win the more. So he says, Look, I don't have to be responsible for all people. Yeah, I don't have to be responsible, but though I am free, yet. I make myself as a servant. That means I, a servant is in coming under obligation to somebody, right? This is, I don't owe anything to all of these people, but I make myself as a debtor, as somebody who's obligated to them. And what is my obligation? It is to bring the gospel to them so that I can get them to faith in Christ, that I can win them. So that's the first thing is he, he sees that he is obligated to people, although actually he's free. You see, he doesn't owe anything, but, but he feels that oh, I owe them the gospel. Second, we see that in order to reach different groups of people, he makes himself relevant to them. Right? To the Jew, I became like a Jew. Um, to those who are living by the law, I also go as a person who's living by that. To those who are living outside of the law, I make myself as somebody who's outside the law, but I'm under law to God. As I'm not, you know, becoming a sinful person, but I go as, hey, okay, I come to you as you are, you know. So, and he says, I, um, to the weak, I become like weak. I mean, people who are, you know, they may not have much. They may be poor. They may be underprivileged, whatever. I go into their world. I step into their world. I, I come in a way that they can relate to. And he says, I do this so that, I says, I become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That means I'm stepping into people's world. I'm coming to them in a way they are. And I'm doing this for one reason, so that I can win them to Jesus. Right? Now, uh, how do we take that and apply it to what we're saying when it comes to contemporary methods, uh, uh, making use of media, making use of technology? You know, uh, how do we do that? Well, 
here are some thoughts. One is, uh, we must speak to people in ways that they understand, be relevant. Right? So we mentioned in the previous lecture, you know, different generations, they are engaging in different ways, how they are learning, uh, where they are learning, it's different. And so we need to you know, be relevant, speak to them in ways that they can understand, communicate to them in ways they can understand. But of course, without violating godly standards. Okay? Uh, and, so, and, and media and technolo technology helps us do that. It helps us speak to people in ways they understand. It helps us reach people, go where people are. And like we also mentioned earlier, it helps us reach many more people in less time. It's actually a big advantage for us uh, to be able to use media and technology. Uh, it also helps us be more responsive. You know, we can respond very quickly to people's needs. You know, and, and we see that happen. You know, uh, nowadays, uh, if people have a need, all they need to do is send a WhatsApp message or send, you know, just uh, send a message. You can imagine in days when we didn't have mobile phones, people will have to go and make a phone call. Or when we didn't have phones, people have to somehow go to the, somehow reach the pastor, go to the pastor's house or church office or whatever. Today, it's so simple. They just send an email. They say, you know, send a message on WhatsApp or something in almost, you know, uh, instantaneous. And, and we can respond also very quickly. You know, that, that They get the help when they need it as quickly as possible, or they get the information they need as soon as possible. Yeah, we can be responsible. Um, we can also be respectful, meaning uh, we can give people an opportunity to explore the Christian faith in ways that they prefer, you know, that without putting them uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a awkward situation. And I'm just thinking of uh, the online services, you know, and uh, I've met people uh, who are people from other faiths. And, you know, recently I met this young lady in Central. She said for two years she was watching, she, she's from an, another faith, but for two years she was watching our services online. She's from a different city. And she's, who, and she, uh, her, she's the only person in her family who believes in Jesus. Just quietly, you know, following our services online. Now, because of college, she's got a chance to come to Bangalore to study. And because of that, she's coming to church and she's serving in church. Right? So I was just thinking that that's just one example. Then there's another two brothers, again, from a different faith family. They actually turn, take turns to come to church. You know, once one brother comes, the other brother's at home. So, and, but they watch online. And they're following. So I'm just looking at, you know, yeah, the situation is a little difficult, but because of technology, they're able to connect, they're able to be a part of the services. So maybe like this, I'm sure that we have so many, so many uh, testimonies where people are exploring the Christian faith without necessarily, you know, uh, in a way that they can feel safe, be safe, and still explore the Christian faith. Um, uh, elderly people, example. Uh, they're not able to come to church. Hey, it's okay. At least at home, they're able to connect to the services or watch the service at the time, and that's convenient to them. Uh, so many, so many things. You know? So it's, it's giving people that opportunity, which otherwise they may not have had. Uh, so so if, we, if, we, if we can do this, we be relevant, go where people are, helps us be more responsive, being respectful. We can actually leverage these uh, media and technology, these contemporary methods in ministry. And we'll get into you know, how uh, contemporary methods in each area of preaching, a venue, and on uh, as we progress. We'll get into the details. But the third uh, lesson I just want to highlight here is this. We need some guidelines. Right? That means some safeguards that while we are using media and technology, what guidelines should we keep for ourselves so that we don't end up doing wrong things? Right? So, and I'm just, you know, I just put this out based on some 
thoughts and experience here. First, of course, is we want to be relevant. That means speak the language of the people. You know, so you can look at it in terms of language. You can look at it in terms of culture and so on. Be relevant to the people whom you are serving. Right. So if we are an example, if we are, are serving young people, and right, understand, you know, how what what ways can they connect with the message, with the word of God, and bring it in a way that's relevant to them. You know, what what are they involved in? You know, uh, okay, we say well, we want to you know create videos for them. Okay, create videos that would engage them. You know, create videos that address challenges that they are facing. Right? Uh, don't just simply create videos. Create videos that are relevant to your audience. Um, I think so. so that's one guideline. Understand the audience, address issues, address challenges that are relevant, and put it in a way and in a format uh, that would engage them. Yeah? So we have to keep things relevant. But while we're doing that, there is no compromise in the message. Our message is God's words. Right? So while the audience influences the methods we use, the audience cannot dictate the truth we deliver. Right? The truth we deliver comes from the word of God. The method we use, the manner in which it is Communicated, yeah, the audience. The audience will say, the audience determines the method, yeah, because if you're speaking to a certain audience, speak to them in their language, speak to them in their in a way that they will understand, in a way that addresses their issues and their concerns and so on. But the truth that we deliver comes from the word of God. That doesn't change at all and should not change. The danger is when we change the message then that's a problem, right? So don't change the message. The truth is always it is, remains it as it is. And uh, Paul mentions, you know, in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 25, we look at that passage. Paul says, you know, whether there are Jews or Greeks, we preach Christ crucified. We have only one message. It's about Jesus, what he did for us on the cross. And whether they are Jews or Greeks, they have different expectations. The Jews are looking for a sign. The Greeks are looking for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. And in that message, God will address their needs. That message is the wisdom of God. It's the power of God. Okay? So there's no compromise in our message. And we have to stay on it. And then we will, we will, we will address this when we talk about sermons and worship and so on. Uh, we'll look at some of the areas where the church has made mistakes and how to avoid that. A third important thing, guideline, is we must be pure in our motivation. Our motivation must sim simply be glorify God and serve people well. Right? Serve to enrich, equip, and empower people. Right? That, so the tendency is uh, sometimes when we're using media and technology, what are the wrong motivations? Sometimes the wrong motivation can be, oh, I want to, you know, uh, become famous, meaning I want to have, you know, so many hundred thousand subscribers or I want to have so many hundred thousand followers. You know, the motivation can become that. That is a danger to become an influencer, you know, a social media superstar, whatever. That's the wrong motivation. Right? Or sometimes the motivation can be competition, meaning I want to be the I want to do better than other church. I want my uh, my, my media and my social whatever that I'm doing. I want it to be just better than everybody else. The motivation becomes com it's, it's more of competition, right? So these are the danger, the wrong kind of motivations. Uh, that could come into play uh, when we are using media and technology, which we should avoid. Sometimes the motivation can be, okay, let me see how many people gave me thumbs up. 
you know, how many people liked my sermon. Uh, I mean, it, you know, and we'll, 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 we'll discuss that as well when we talk about social media and so on, how to really look at those metrics and numbers. But that again becomes the wrong motivation, you know. Uh, so while we are using media, technology, keep the motivation for the Lord. We want to do this to glorify you and we want to serve people well. You know, so, okay, let's do the best we can. Let's serve them the best we can. Let's bring it as good quality as we can. Not because we want to outdo bad or somebody else that we'll be competing with somebody else. Not because we you know, are trying to become rich and famous and all that. No, 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 no. We're doing it because we want to serve the people well. We want to be able to impart into their life. We want to be able to communicate uh, and give to them. So let's do it well. That should be the motivation. So we need to stay in that pure motivation uh, uh, and not get caught up in some of the wrong uh, areas. Another important part, or uh, another important guideline um, that we want to mention is, <coughs> sorry, uh, we need to be blameless in our conduct. Right? That means how we use these tools and how we present and how what we present, it should be blameless. It should not bring a bad name to the Lord Jesus. It should not bring reproach to the name of Jesus. It shouldn't bring a reproach to the church. So that's where we have to be careful. And we also uh, you know, have to be sensitive to who we are ministering to and so on. You know, so uh, blameless in how we go about doing these things. And I'll also share as we go along simple things. You know, I remember, uh, you know, and, 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 and of course we made, we've made mistakes and we learned from them. For example, um, you know, uh, there was a time when, uh, the, and when we had a graphics team, and okay, they, they worked along with the publications team and so on. And uh, for our, our, I think one of our very earliest books, uh, Foundations, uh, I told them, I said, you know, I'll just design a cover that is showing foundations being laid, like, you know, stones being laid. Uh, and that, that kind of captures the the idea of the book foundations and i left it at that then the book got printed it came and then on the book cover of a graphic design person who was working with us at that time he had taken an image and i think some you might or you might have seen it which has some pebbles one on top of each other like one big pebble one small pebble another small pebble and so on a small pebble arranged like that so what did I tell him? I gave him the idea saying, hey, this, you know, uh, a picture that shows foundation being laid, stones on one another. It's a good picture for the cover. Put that in, you know. So I'd left it. I didn't check. Usually I would check, but I didn't. I thought it was simple enough. But he went and got another picture, a graphic that shows stones being laid on top of each other. And it didn't strike me. I saw the book printed, it was already printed, covers already done, everything's all, you know, a few thousand copies have already been printed. Then suddenly somebody comes, somebody, I don't know, I don't remember who exactly, but somebody come, hey, do you know what that image actually means? I said, I don't know, I'm just terrible. That's actually some form of Eastern religion where they use those stones on top of each other. Oh, is it? And I checked. Oh yeah, so that's you know some sort of a I don't know uh, it's something they they, they use in uh, some Eastern religions. They, they put these stones on top of it. Oh, and we had printed that on our cover. So I'm just saying an example. This is just an honest mistake, but it was it was a simple thing, you know, just an image being used for a book cover, very simple thing, but it had meaning. And the meaning was something totally different, you know. So then I had to bring it back to the attention of our graphic designer. Say, hey, this is what it means. It was it was a learning for all of us. 
and then they you know they came up with another cover which is actually bricks being laid and you know they said that's what i meant i meant bricks being laid somebody building a foundation not these things so this is an honest mistake but i think that i like that there's been so many so many things you know uh over the years we've made mistakes we've learned uh i, I still remember once um again this graphics thing for some event i don't know what it was but this person had used an image of a person's hand and in the graphic this person had a tattoo it was actually a, a tattoo of a cross but it was a tattoo and you know it, it had gone we had we had done it whatever event it was and the promotion had happened that means the image was you know had gone out then i get a call from somebody or a message and i say hey is apc promoting tattoos i'm like okay where, where are you saying then they send me a copy of the image look you have uh, you know you've used this image this person has a tattoo on the hand and so they are not looking at the events they are looking at what image we used and the fact that in this graphic uh, there was a hand and the hand had a tattoo on it and i was like oh oh I had to then call the you know the the media team explain to them hey see this is i know it's an honest mistake like they're not even thinking about this but it's going out into the public people are seeing it and they are taking this kind of a message from there that as a church is promoting tattoos and for us that's not a you know it's not something we even you know uh, involve ourselves in that's a way to immediately correct the graphic do some photoshop to remove the <laughs> tattoo and uh, you know send out the message uh, the graphic and so i'm just just giving some small examples where um we have to think, you know, in 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 how we are using these tools. Even in, I'm just giving simple example of graphics, uh, but in so many ways, we think, you know, what is the message that is getting out to the public? You now we can't just say, hey, I'm just using the tool and I'm just creating a video and so on. Uh, what is the message getting out to the public in 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 us using these tools? Is it you know, is it sending a wrong message? Is it communicating an incorrect message? Is it bringing a bad name to the Lord Jesus? Is it uh, bringing a bad name to the church? So we need to be very careful, uh, very blameless in in our conduct. And we don't want to offend anybody. You know, uh, sometimes I've even got feedback on our sermon title. I think. Um, I, I think there was one sermon, or just a, I just I think I've preached just an inspirational sermon. Our God is greater. Like now we have the talk. Our God is greater. God is stronger. We we sing, but I just put that sermon title, and I and then there was a comment that you know maybe some person from another faith put it. Does it mean your God is greater than my God? Is you know, so uh, of course they're coming from a place where they don't understand what we're saying. But that made me think, right? That when we are putting our message out in public, uh, that the sermon title should not turn people away. You know, we want to draw them in so that at least they come in and they explore the Christian faith. Now, the title was very simple Our God is Greater. But how did this person from a different faith perceive that sermon title? You know, it was like, hey, you're telling me straight in my face, my God is of no use, right? So why should I even listen to your message? So then they, it puts them in a very defensive position. They want to listen to the message. They want to defend their position. And so it made me think, you know, um, even in selecting sermon titles, uh, we want to draw people into at least hear the message and then decide. You know, and so on. It doesn't mean we shouldn't speak the truth. We speak the truth. Of course, our God is greater. But being sensitive to whom we are speaking to, you know, and how we speak to them, uh, uh, becomes very very important so just different different things that uh, we we've, we've observed and experienced uh, the goal is to be careful be sensitive to the audience be blameless in how we use um, um, these tools of media and technology and the last thought that i wanted to share with us here when talking about some guidelines is our goal is to seek lasting fruit that means our goal is not hype, our goal is not emotionalism, our goal is not excitement, you know? So sometimes, you know, we can use uh, media and technology to make things so flashy, so exciting, uh, you know, people get, wow, um, 
uh, and uh, uh, sometimes we tend to be using the tools we exaggerate intentionally or unintentionally and that means we we tend to give an impression of something much bigger than what is actually there you know uh, and then that 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 first of all it it means that we are doing something wrong because we are miscommunicating and secondly uh, it only excites people but the big question we have to ask is is there lasting fruit you know have people's lives been really changed so our goal is not excitement definitely our goal is not to exaggerate to create something bigger than what it really is our goal is are people's lives really changed you know so we have to be careful that when we're using media and technology and we're communicating because somebody is somewhere far away they're watching the content they don't know what the reality is on the ground uh, they could end up getting a very wrong very different impression of what of what the actual thing is depending on how we communicate you know so uh, and and this happens so much in video videography and so on you know you know maybe there are 50 people in the hall but the way you position your camera you can make it look like there are 5000 people you know you give an impression oh uh, 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 and so we got to be careful don't do that you know just just make it plain and simple this is what it is let let what they see is what they get you know what they see is they should see the actual reality uh, without you know um, us uh, exaggerating misrepresenting and without unnecessarily creating hype and excitement our goal is to bring about genuine change in the lives of people real fruit you know fruit that will remain and so we have to be very careful otherwise the tendency always is on media technology you can make something look 10 times bigger and 10 times more exciting than what it actually is and it leaves a wrong impression uh, and so on so example um there was a time when uh, at, at apc for worship for a long time you know we never used lights and led panels nothing it was just plain and simple and then slowly we we started using lights and at one point our team said let's also use smoke machines <laughs> you can imagine um now i wasn't for it uh, i didn't want it you know i didn't necessarily think it was useful but they just wanted to try it. They tried it out for a few Sundays. And then the re response for people was, why are you doing that? You know, what are you trying to achieve by you know, using smoke machine on a, on a Sunday service? What kind of, what, what are we trying to create? You know, so that was a simple question. And that was like, yeah, more the, the easy answer. We don't need it. So we got rid of it. OK, you're going to use color lights. Use very sim simple, nothing. Um, there's going to be distracting, nothing that's going to create unnecessary hype and excitement. Simple lights, just to you know make things look nice. That's it. You know? So these are all choices we had to make uh, as, as we went along. And uh, the, 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 the underlying question is, whatever we do, is it going to help us bring lasting fruit? Is it just cause, helping us create excitement? Okay, we don't need that. Is it just causing us to, you know, exaggerate, look bigger than what we are? Oh no, we don't need that. Is it helping us to really touch lives, helping us to be more effective in serving people? Okay, that's a good thing. We'll go with that. So these simple questions that we ask when making various decisions will will help us. Right? So. Just to recap and, and then close here, some guidelines that we need to always keep in mind. One, be relevant. Speak to the, use the tools, use media in a way that will help us reach our particular audience. Second, when we use uh, media, when we use our tools, uh, we don't want to compromise on the message. 
the message is still the word of God. You're going to preach and teach the word of God. Stay true to that. Third, the motivation. Why I'm using this must be pure. Right? I want to glorify God. I want to serve people well. That's it. Nothing else. Right? I'm not competing with anybody else. I'm not here for name and fame. No. Glorify God. Do it well. Bring some benefit to the people. Equip them, empower them, enrich them. Do some good to the people in their journey of faith. Okay. Fourth, be blameless. Right. That means use it in a way that it will not bring a bad name to the Lord or to his church. Right. So be very, very careful. Be very careful. Because uh, media technology, once you're using it, once you put it out there, it, you don't know how many people are watching it. So many people see it. They, they can, you know, uh, it, they can get affected. They, it's impacting them. So we have to make sure that we are blameless, do it right, do it well. And finally, fifth point is the goal is not to create hype, not to create excitement, not to exaggerate. The goal is lasting fruit. Right? Our people's lives being changed. You know, yes, we want to create something that's engaging. We want to create something that's uh, that's captivating. Uh, we want to use all our creative talent. We want to use all our, our technical skill. All of it is good. But what are we trying to achieve? We want to create lasting fruit. Not just an excitement, not just a hype. You know, uh, somebody's life has to be changed. Somebody has to be strengthened in their faith. Somebody has to be encouraged. That is lasting fruit. So if we keep these guidelines, I think uh, it'll help us make the right choices, the right decisions, and it'll help us use media and technology in a in a very positive way for the glory of God and for serving people. Okay. So let me pause here. Let's um, open up for time for questions, discussions. Uh, any 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 thoughts you have? Any questions you have? And uh, from next week, we'll start getting into you know various aspects of media technology that we need to cover. Feel free to ask any questions, any discussions. Anyone? Pastor, uh, yes. one small, small question. This is regarding uh, using a laptop or any other media for children's church. I'll say, for example, laptop or tab or something for children's church. So there is one aspect that, uh, I know, the screen time of children. And should we promote that or should we, uh, how do we handle this? Like, can we use laptop or uh, tab in a small group of children's church or? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, so the answer to that is, I think it's simple in the sense that, see, uh, children's church, you know, maybe maximum is for a duration of uh, two hours in an entire week. Uh, and uh, there, um, we, you know, if, if we use a laptop or, you know, have kids watch um, a video or a short, short video or, or something of that nature on, you know, on a screen, it's, it's, it's actually very small time. You know, we may, I, I don't know, I'm just guessing, you know, maximum you spend half an hour, 40 minutes, not, you know, more than that. So if you look at it in terms of the whole week, that's only a small part, which I think is, is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the real issue is when they go home, what do the parents do? Because they're obviously spending more time at home seven days a week. And that's where screen time becomes an issue, meaning if parents are using the phone or the laptop or the computer or whatever screen device uh, and letting the children just consume that for hours and hours and hours, that is a problem. It in church, it's basically maximum they're there for two hours um, out of which you know we may show a video or something for maybe 30 or 30 minutes or less 
so it's overall it's not a big thing um, but so so in a nutshell that's not a problem but at the same time as a community we can think of you know other skills that we also want to develop for the children uh, we want them to develop social skills we want to develop uh, you know their ability to think uh, about the scriptures uh, their ability to worship their ability to, to discuss the scripture with other children and so uh, this showing a video may be only a small part we may show a video and say okay then discuss about the video you know what do you think about it or what was nice about it uh, what did you learn from it so um, we are also spending time doing the other things uh, of uh, interaction, prayer, worship, fellowship, uh, in addition to maybe watching a video. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are doing something very wholesome. A video is only a small part of it. And uh, so it is uh, not a, I, I don't see it as a problem. Yeah. Yes, Pastor, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, any, any other questions, any other thoughts? Okay. All right. So today is just our introduction, giving us uh, an overall direction of where we're going to go. Uh, there's a lot of ground we're going to cover. Uh, some parts of this might be a little technical, uh, but I'll just share those technical details more as a point of uh, information and learning for us. Um, I will also share a lot of what we are doing here at APC uh, in terms of the software technology platforms we're using. Uh, the directions we're looking at going in, in, in the coming years. Uh, and I hope, you know, you can take a, a lot of this and use it in your own churches and ministries. Okay. Let's close for today. Somebody can close and pray and then we will dismiss, please. Anyone can pray and dismiss us. Father, we thank you for this uh, morning that you have given us to learn together. Thank you for this this course that you have given. We pray, O oh God, that we would uh, continue to learn well and to adapt this in our ministry, in our personal life. And we pray, O oh God, that let your kingdom be established in every area of our life, God. May your name alone be glorified in and through us. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone. Hope we have Happy. taken attendance. Hope they have taken our attendance. Uh, yes, yes, it's um, automatically recorded by Google. So Google Classroom. Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, okay. Everyone, yes. Yeah, so Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. God bless. All right. Enjoy All right. your day. All right.